So the next two topics that we look at then are goal setting and mental preparation. Put these two together, it's all to do with your brain and thinking in sport. We're going to start off with goal setting. Again, we did these in the AEP. Uh, simple acronym that we use is SMART. Different than in previous years, and if you go on the internet and search this, you'll find different, let different letters for different things. Use the OCR focus, that's what we've got the key booklets for. So, reasons for setting goals, first of all. To motivate you, to improve and optimise performance, to ensure you're more likely to train, okay? They might be on as a six mark. There's quite a few things to talk about with SMART, okay? Don't be surprised to see that. So be ready to talk about reasons for setting goals. So SMART itself then, if this was a six mark, you'd talk about S, then M, then A, then R, then T. Okay, so S sounds for specific. Your goal has got to be clear and uh, it'd be more likely to be achieved. It's got to be something very, very specific. I want to improve this. And you explain what this is. It's then got to be measurable. It's important for monitoring, keeping track of your progress, okay? The goal's not measurable, how do you know you've achieved it? How do you know you're making progress towards it? It's things for measuring goals, common things like your fitness tests, okay? It could be data analysis in, in your sports, so how many times you make the perfect serve in tennis, for example, or how many faults you do, or how many second serves you get, the percentage of your success rate as a certain skill. Loads of ways of doing it, but it's important, again, for keeping track of your progress. A stands for achievable in SMART. So your motivation will be improved as you can actually reach a goal. It's not too far out of reach. For me to turn around and say, I want to be Prime Minister next year, it's not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen anyway. But to put it in those next year, it's definitely not going to happen. It's unachievable. If I was working towards that now as a goal, I'd be quite silly because I've not got anything in place to get there. Whereas for me to say maybe with my, um, with my rugby to win the, the league next season, you know, our team's up there in the league, yeah, possibly. It's, it's an achievable goal, it's an achievable focus, okay? Recorded then. It's got to be recorded. Now, this is the one you see changes, recorded, realistic, whatever. The one we need for OCR is recorded. Um, it's crucial for monitoring and once achieved, can be deleted or checked off. You know whereabouts you are, you know where your scores were. There's no point in you completing um, a jump of 1 meter 50 one week and then you're doing 1 meter 49 because you didn't record it. You think you've done really well. You've not made progress. So recording helps you to see your progress as well. All right. Finally, it's got to be timed. Splitting up into short-term goals is effective, but there's got to be a time limit on there to make sure you stay on track. If you say by six weeks, you've got six weeks to achieve. And if you don't get there, well, you've not failed. You just reset, go again. It keeps you in touch with your goal. Okay. Next bit then is the mental preparation. We've got to go and say we set a target. Now we're getting ready to take part in the sport. Mental preparation. I always think about sat in the changing rooms. This is how you're preparing yourself up here. You've done everything you can with your body. You're fit. You've got your components of fitness. You've done your principles of training. You've done your warm up. This is the next stage now. They link this in the mock with the warm up actually. But this is I always think done before a game or an activity. So imagery. Creation of pictures in our mind of happiness. It benefits you because it reduces anxiety and stress. It can improve your concentration and focus. Okay, so it could be imagining the positive times, the happy things that you've done, might be in that sport or outside of the sport. Just really gives you that positive feeling when out there. There's nothing worse than having a negative mindset. Next one is positive thinking. Similar to imagery, imagining the good things, but this is being positive about your past experiences or future performances. Not looking back there thinking, oh, this is bad, this is bad. It's about seeing it looking very, very positive. So whereas imagery was just imagining things of happiness, making you happy, Im imagining seeing you know, all that winning the trophy at the end, this is now thinking of how good things have been. Uh, it might be imagining that time you made an amazing pass. Might be that time when you caught the ball, when you did a perfect routine, when you did the perfect somersault, okay? It's imagining them good things. What will it do? Well, it increases your confidence, definitely. It prevents worry and your inability to make decisions through fear. You're not scared, you'll be more likely to make positive uh, decisions, all right? Mental rehearsal. So, it's not mental preparation, that's the whole of this. Mental rehearsal is actually external, so like watching yourself on a film, um, 
going through the route in your mind before a race, you're watching yourself do it though, so it could be a race driver, imagine himself going around that circuit and he's watching his car from like up above in his mind. Or internally, it could be imagining yourself doing the activity. Uh, penalty shootouts is common for this, a player will shut their eyes and they imagine they're doing that movement. Some argue it's one of, one of the most underused ways of training, um, mental rehearsal, actually imagining yourself training. Train for an hour, but you could go home and imagine yourself training, it's still classified as training that. So you're imagining yourself doing it. What's the benefits? It speeds up your reactions because you feel like you've just done it. It enables concentration, focus and positive feelings and it can prepare you to react to the opponent. You can imagine what they're going to do. Last one, selective attention. Concentrating on what is important for you. Okay, a goalkeeper will focus on, um, you know, what the, what the shots are going to be placed at them. They won't worry about the other external things to them. They focus on what is related to their, uh, their position. Okay, um, they might be focusing on relevance. So the foot kicking a ball is more important to a goalkeeper than the crowd around them. They won't focus on the crowd, they'll focus on that foot which is going to kick the ball towards them. What's the benefit to this? It allows again for greater reactions and a focus and concentration.